This is a placeholder song, a placeholder song Until we replace the old song This is a placeholder song for Is This Anything? Hey, hey it's Leedy! Hey, hey, it's Leedy! <laughs> Leedy is now Brett, so... Oh, yeah, she was here on time, yes. Brett. That doesn't sound like me at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I guess... It's the new me, you're, I guess. You're looking at this the wrong way. We're not. <laughs> we're not saying she's doing Brett-like things. We're, we're oh. rewarding her for her punctuality. Yeah. Still, again, I gotta With argue. The... Seems like a punishment. <laughs> it's a punishment. She replaced you. Yeah. And now you're a lady. <laughs> that is a punishment. Her job is really hard. I don't like Between it. Between us. You should stay leady, all right? <laughs> I didn't bring any jokes, but that's <laughs> Brett too, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh, leady bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even accurate, but it felt good. Oh boy. The show would definitely decline in value if we made Leedy come up with jokes That'd and we so only bad. made Brett draw. <laughs> like, what well, is. <laughs> I once, uh, for Ask Us Everything for the, one of their, uh, was it an oh, anniversary this? show? No, uh, yeah. yeah, we were all there. I, I, ov- I took over for, without Leedy <laughs> knowing, I took over for Leedy. Uh, or we. Good, I, really I just did. I just put in parallel. I I became uh, Lee Druck Corbett, and uh, yeah, it was um, it was That's very difficult. Funny. You did a very good Strand- job. Stressful. You did a great. It was hilarious. It was yeah. really funny. And then Lee was uh, Muggleton, right? You did, you did a good Australian accent. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, in the dear. beginning, it, you did. Uh, you and Taylor did a, a thing. I think. I Wait, are you are you that. pretending like you don't remember you? No, I don't remember doing uh, an oh. Australian. <laughs> No, you're putting on a mustache on your face right now. Yeah, and please, remember. if you're going to put on a mustache, <laughs> never make it the same color as your skin tone again, because that was very disturbing. <laughs> you don't like this right here? You don't like... It looked oh. like it was growing in. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. look like yeah. a 13-year-old boy trying to grow or a mustache for the first you time. you look like you're growing into an actual, like, seal person. <laughs> oh, God, that's horrible. <laughs> oh, wow, it's just so subtle. I'm just like, I wouldn't even... I can only make it. different colors. Look, I can make it cyan. Let's try Ooh. that. <laughs> you actually... <laughs> You actually look. That like actually looks the, great. Was this is a, this is a deep cut? You look like the kid who is starring in Die Hard, uh, who, the thirteen year old who eats chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> the thirteen year old with chocolate on his face. Lady, do you understand? No, That's from an old remember. episode. Yeah. That's from our Kristen Key episode, uh, oh, which is, right. I believe, episode. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna say episode twenty seven. Not sure. Not sure. Ooh. So uh, fans. Drop it in the comments. Was Brett was, wrong? Was Brett right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> was he on time? Definitely not. So how's it going? What's new with everybody? Woo. Woo. All right, Brett, you're getting ready for tour, right? Oh, yeah. It's exciting. Guess who else is getting ready for tour? Who? Ooh, Lady Corbin. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. Lady's going to be on tour with me. Oh, that's dope. Wait, yeah. So I could do Brett's makeup on tour. <laughs> it's Bring true. The whole palette. That's such a Yeah, fun idea. it's been so hard to have her instruct me over the phone uh, yeah. for the pandemic. So it'd be great to be in person. Even though Zoom was a thing, you were still just doing it over the phone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like this? I mean, I don't know. Describe it to me. What are you doing? I look black. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> it's very problematic. It probably looks okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm getting ready for tour. Um, mm-hmm. I am been just uh, like a Get merch uh, in in order, and then also I I also needed to buy new clothes and shoes and stuff like that. So I'm like ordering more stuff online than I should, assuming that this isn't gonna fit and this the shoe is gonna not look good. And then I'll return you know most of it. Um, hopefully I, I get some some hits. So that's been uh, that's been fun. I don't still uh, ever shop for myself. So uh, buying stuff is like it's very rare for me, and it's really fun. That's um. I had a very similar experience before I went on tour where I was like, what do I even wear when I'm on stage? Cause we just been right. in our homes for the pandemic the whole time. And so I was just like trying on things and being like, is this a s- show- shirt you were on when you would stand up? I don't know anymore. You should have brought it to the podcast. Is this I should have brought it into the podcast. Bar- <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of you who are Patri- patrons, uh, you'll know that I have no issue with knowing what to wear out in public at home. <laughs> I have Lady, solved it. Wait till you see this outfit. Oh boy. I'm I so know insane. exactly what works. Oh, guacamole. It is <laughs> these okay. pants and shirts. If oh, you want to know, here, here. I gotta go to the patron immediately. I want you to <laughs> I will it's not on there yet. 
But ah! I want you to guess what Rob looks like based off of this. We went to go get food and somebody came up and asked them if asked Rob if they could he could pray for him. And then <laughs> said a rare prayer for Rob and then to me went nice to meet you. <laughs> So either that means I was not worthy of a prayer or Rob's outfit meant that this guy was like, I need to pray for this guy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> or it meant that I... <laughs> I'm already excited. <laughs> wow. There will be drawings of what I think this Ooh, outfit. Oh, okay. I like that. I do mm -hmm. like... I do like A great uh, prequel to There Will Be Blood. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. There will, will be drawings. Speaking of that movie, uh, I just uh, heard Quentin Tarantino talking about it. I really hated it when I first watched it. I want to watch it again to see if I like it. It was just, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen There Will Be Blood. I have. Um, there was, it was just the, the soundtrack was moving so slow. In fact, the title of the movie, there's a bit I used to do. The title of the movie was the only thing that got me through the movie. I kept on thinking to myself, I was like, there will be blood. <laughs> there will be blood. It's going to, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's going to get interesting soon. Uh, but no, my, my, my argument When that explosion here, came and the kid went deaf, were you like, is there blood? Is he bleeding out of his ears? <laughs> is that it? I was like, no, it's just oil. Damn. <laughs> they should have called this movie Oil. Mm -hmm. This should be a reaction podcast called Where is the Blood? <laughs> Where? <laughs> okay, lady and everybody else. Uh, uh, I'm not, when you do watch the, the, the episode... Uh, I don't defend the shirt. I said very clearly, and I hope this doesn't get edited out, I said very clearly that the shirt doesn't do it for me. But the pants, I stand by 100%. And here's why. In part, I have had several strangers who don't know who I am Offer to street. pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> One of them just threw holy water on me and started speaking Latin. Very strange. <laughs> Uh, they've asked me where I got my pants. Three separate, I think it's three, two, three, three separate people asked me, where did you get those? And I told them where I got them from. That's if how. you want to know what these pants are like, you got to join the Patreon. You can join That's for as little it. as a dollar Ooh, a month. Early, early plug today. I mean, <laughs> it was perfect. They just, they <laughs> fell, they fell into my lap. What was I going to do? You know? yes. The two things that I'm hoping we do are tease more things in the Patreon to get more patrons and uh, say more wrong things just to get people to do things in the comments. <laughs> I think slavery ended in the 1980s. I mean, if I'm wrong, sound off in the comments. That's everybody. Michael Jackson went from black to white. That's right. That's yeah. right. If there's another reason for either of those things, sound off in the comments, guys. Let us know. One plus one <laughs> equals. Uh, what was the thing that you were a stickler about the other day, Rob? Point nine. Meant, nine oh, point nine nine. <laughs> uh, equals. Uh, does it equal two or does it equal point? Uh, one equal point one. nine eight. Point nine eight, repeating. Eight, 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 nine. I don't know math. <laughs> Rob was correct in that point nine repeating is not one because it's five. Sound off in the comments, everybody. <laughs> let let us know. Uh, there will uh, be blood. <laughs> there will be blood. <laughs> the saga certainly continues uh, with that. Uh, since we've recorded that episode, oh. um, I have been going pretty much back and forth with this one guy, Hugh O'Byrne. Uh, oh, yeah. Hate that guy. Uh, <laughs> just... I I really got under this guy's skin, and he just cannot fathom why I'm such a freaking moron, and I and I don't realize that obviously point nine nine repeated is equal to one. Here, I, are all the, here are all the proofs. Here's all the mathematical proofs. I don't understand. And for me to just be the teensiest bit obstinate about it is so funny because he's he's just if he's furious about it, it's great. Rob, I so desperately wanted the person you were getting into a fight with about this to be some like super famous scientist. Like, get into flame war with uh, Neil Tyson. Neil Neil D. Oh, Tyson. You don't want to get me started on Neil deGrasse Tyson. Not a fan. Not a fan of this. Guy. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I, he's always rubbed me the wrong way. He's so fucking smug. And every goddamn he is very smug. He's interview smug. he goes on, and I'm like, dude, just like. Like, I appreciate the astrophysics, and I also appreciate, you know, p p uh, science, like, popularism, we'll call it. Like, I enjoy Brian Greene immensely. I think that, you know, I, I enjoy his books. I enjoy his lectures. He's done a really good job of taking the world of physics and, like, putting it to the to the average armchair physicist, the layperson who's a little bit interested. Not Tyson. No, sir. I, I don't like it. 
I really thought there was going to be a substantive argument after that, but nope. Just <laughs> no, I no. don't like it. Tumbling down, tripling down. Well, well was, you're you know you're a pretty uh, bright person, but you do approach most conversation with, when you are educating somebody or informing them with quite a bit of humility. So I could see how that would rub you the wrong way because it's, it takes a tremendous amount of effort to not condescend and uh, be smug and and display all those characteristics. There is, I always find this when Thank somebody you. gets popular for something, you know, like Neil deGrasse Tyson is this popular astrophysicist. Doris Kearns Goodwin is a, is a popular, famous uh, historian. There's always like a, a moment where everyone's like, oh, this person is cool. We like this. But then they get too cool. And then some people are like, but we don't like things that are too cool. And so then they start like looking for poking holes. And with Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think there also have been some problematic reports about him being a little gropey also. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and so at that. this point, I'm like hands and off. And he's so with... smug when he's bur- gropey too. <laughs> oh God, he's like, oh, you didn't know Mercury was in retrograde? <laughs> <laughs> These breasts are stardust. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Obviously. I'm not touching you. <laughs> yeah. I'm touching stardust. I'm touching the strong force between our atoms. <laughs> So at this point, I'm like hands off with Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm like, yeah, I'm not well, going to defend is. you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting, Jared. Uh, the, 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 the reason I backed off with the, with the lack of substantive argument, mm-hmm. my brain was going to go to that, too. And I was like, and anyway, he's got a bunch of allegations or whatever. But I was like, that's not that's not really an argument. <laughs> so I actually it is. <laughs> Quiet, lady. All right. <laughs> Hush, woman. <laughs> no, but Rob, Rob, are you saying like, but I can attack him intellectually and yeah. leave all that out and it's still a valid argument? Right, right. I was going to say that, but I said, well, that's actually kind of a, a left field thing, which could also be true and horrible. But something I was going to say was when that stuff came out and he, he kind of brushed it off, there's like a, there's an interview, it was a late night interview where he handles it in a kind of a fucking weird way. I didn't really appreciate, I didn't, I didn't like the response. He was just like, well, you know, he, he, he explained off the allegations in the same smug way that he would explain off something about physics. And it was like, this something about this guy fucking bothers me. And he bothered me before. So when those things did came out, I was like, yeah, yeah, I th- yeah. I, <laughs> me I and, uh, uh, me and a I friend, think, I think that was fair. Uh, me and a friend went to mm-hmm. the uh, natural history museum, right? When those allegations came out. And mm-hmm. when you go into the, Cinerama dome to look at like the um the you know, Cinerama the ca- dome. What do you call it? The what's the I don't big know. domey it's Cinerama thing? dome. I've never heard before, and I love it. That's a great word. Well, Cinerama dome is a place in Los Angeles that's like this uh, giant. It's screen. like a Cinnabon, but it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some more Cinerama cinnamon? <laughs> a little Cinerama dust. <laughs> Cinerama dome is like the cinnamon buns like food challenge thing. It's just like, but can you take down the Cinerama dome? <laughs> <laughs> you have 10 minutes to eat this five pound cinnamon bun. Wow. What do you call it? It's like the, Cinderella. it's like a panographic or something. It's like a big dome that they show things on, oh, what the heck? you know, uh, the planetarium. Astro planetarium. Dome? Thank you. Yeah. Planetarium. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So he has like a little presentation about the planetarium. I just remember just being like, Ugh. Ooh, <laughs> bad timing. Ugh. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else have any cool, fun bits of business? Uh, yeah, I'll check in. Oh, mm-hmm. someone just freeze. Oh, Brett just went away. What happened, uh, Brett? What do you mean? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I may have been like, oh, maybe it's my graphics processor or my graphics card and is getting overwhelmed. So maybe I should unplug this um, monitor adapter going into an HD monitor. And then I did that, and I accidentally unplugged my camera. I really, this, we could have just moved on. Sorry. <laughs> but then we couldn't have had that really long explanation for I accidentally unplugged my, <laughs> I was thinking that I need, maybe my graphics card was operating at too well, few BTSs. And can I just I say? I just upgraded mm-hmm. my RAM to 80 BTSs. I <laughs> thought maybe I should switch over. I love BTS. My... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got 80 ban- of the, that, Asian band in my computer. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's what might be gunking it up, <laughs> slowing it down. Got their whole catalog. <laughs> I I will check in. What's your check in, Rob? 
Well, I'm staying at my dad's house again. As Rob, do your check-in. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say that uh, I've gotten some feedback from, from fans. And one of them in particular said that she loves our check-ins. And hmm. that I think maybe the last episode or, or one of our most recent episodes, we barely checked in. And she was like, this is funny and all, but like, how are you guys doing? Where's the check-in? Yeah, I want to yeah. see how you guys like, are what's doing. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I just wanted to point that out. And that, and, and that was, and we, uh, at our previous episode, we discussed how somebody said, I like when you guys do the joke segment. <laughs> yes, that was so, very funny. So we have now a, a, a counter a balance to that. There is a lot of love about the show, guys. That's what I'm learning. Yeah. yeah everybody this. likes, yeah, a different section of the, of the show. Yeah. Mm. I like the, personally, I love the Patreon section. <laughs> Me too. We're, I love we're, when Jared we talk the about Patreon. the Patreon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part of the show. I just think it's so fun. <laughs> I yeah. like the weekly part where Brett unplugs his camera and then each week he tries to explain it in a longer and longer mm. fashion. I think it's a great running. Game. Ooh, that is the bit now. Ooh, <laughs> Lee, could you could you draw, could you personify the Patreon and then we could just have oh. them on as a guest? Like, hey, what's so, what are you, <laughs> what have you been up to? <laughs> the we, Patreon. Well, and then he's like, ah, he comes out. I got a lot of great new content. I've got stickers <laughs> coming. <laughs> yeah. And it's just an animation. Just like, I I'm still not letting you post straight videos. You got to give a link. <laughs> <laughs> so I had doctor's appointments last hey. week. That Whoa, was like all I did. Oh, cool. I was like, you guys Very remember cool. from last week, I was fasting so I could get my endoscopy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I, left, I left for the endoscopy. Um, I, I had an anesthetician put me under. He had a real, it's my first day vibe going on. He gave me a massive funny. bruise. Oh, it's still I there. Oh, yeah. man. There. That's not yeah. a way to get you to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Karate <laughs> chop. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> Go to bed. They hit him in the head. <laughs> and uh, after that, I had First another. Uh, I was diagnosed with fatty liver like 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 in 2019 or 2018 or something like that. And uh, my my new gastro, who I like a lot, said, you got to see a hepatologist if you've been diagnosed with fatty liver. So I went to go see. Uh, he said it like it's a band. <laughs> oh, you got to go see a hepatologist. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're amazing live. They are blowing up right now. <laughs> you thought BTS was good. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check out a hepatologist. <laughs> hepatologist, though, is not fat. Because that's where uh, the liver to just it, that you know process fat anyways so i go down to the hepatologist <laughs> and that's a joke for my hepatologists ah uh, okay uh, <laughs> if you're a hepatologist get in the comments yeah, send yeah. It off. <laughs> let me let us know if that, let us know if that was right sense. yeah the liver is the same as the lungs <laughs> <laughs> let us know <laughs> uh, I go to the hepatologist I explain everything and she's like I don't think you have fatty liver and I'm like well now I don't know what to think guys so she recommended a new test which I gotta go schedule um, but all my all my like tests basically came back like no warnings no emergencies or anything like that just uh, basically status quo so I'm looking forward to having a week with no doctor's appointments this week maybe I'll get a haircut there's so many things I could do wait you're gonna get another haircut <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that's that's a. That's How a, often do you guys get haircuts? Don't treat me like I'm an idiot for for getting you haircuts. got a haircut. You hate it for a month. Yeah, yeah and, and then, then finally grew in. You're like, I need another haircut. I got a haircut, <laughs> and then I got a haircut right before tour. It's been tour. All of tour has happened, and I haven't gotten another haircut. <laughs> did, did you guys uh, watch uh, a lot of Boy Meets World? A fair amount. We talked about uh, this on one of the live shows. How good that show was. Well, we did, we did. It just mm -hmm. the, Brett came strikingly close to a joke that that or, um, that came about on Boy Meets World, Ooh. where Corey uh, he gets his hair cut and he's like, <laughs> it's, so, it's almost like a stand up bit the way he says it, it was really funny. He was like, he's like basically questioning the whole haircut thing. He's like, that's how I get haircuts. I get it cut and then I hate it for like a month and then I like it for like a day and that's when I know to get another haircut. It's called my haircut cycle of shame. <laughs> that's a like great that. joke. That's in Boy Meets World. So, yeah, it's there a are great some really good show. jokes. It's a great that. show. <laughs> yeah, it's a, really it's a good great joke. joke. It fit him perfectly. It also played into the episode, but it was just, it was such a funny thing, Damn. just the character revealing thing about it, how he hates himself. Uh, my favorite joke in Boy Meets World was just like a, and th this is you know, 
this is back in a time where everything was really peachy keen on a sitcom. Uh, so, so this was just like such a risque joke, but it made me laugh so much. Not even risque, but just, just the type of joke you wouldn't expect to hear on a sitcom. Mm-hmm. Uh, Corey and Topanga are getting married. Uh, Sean and Corey have had some huge blowout fight. Sean comes in in the middle of the ceremony. They get into it. It's really, really, there's like a huge tension in the air, total silence. Sean says something really messed up. And then uh, Corey's older brother goes, ha ha, Sean's poor. (laughs) (laughs) I was so hard. I gotta watch Boy Meets World. This this show sounds amazing. It's a very good show. I I, 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 I would rewatch it for sure. I would certainly rewatch it. Next Patreon episode, The Boys... And maybe Watch maybe- every episode of Boys Meet World. <laughs> Boy Meets World. Can I tell you guys one more quick story? Do it. Uh, this is the podcast now. Yeah. Two months. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought uh, maybe we were going to do that jokey thing or whatever. Whatever. Uh, but yeah. No. <laughs> we might get it in. Okay. If there's time. Uh, be- maybe two months into the pandemic, things are really shut down. There are a few places that are still open, like in Pennsylvania and something like that. A comic kicks me up. He's like, hey, do you want to go to... Uh, where was it? F- do you want to do you want to do this gig five hours away in Pennsylvania for one hundred and fifty dollars? Uh, I think no hotel, and you're gonna feature, and also this other comic is gonna be headlining. Basically, like, hey, do you want to drive five hours away for one hundred fifty dollars to give a headliner a ride? <laughs> Would you like to be a personal Uber for $150? Can um, I pause you real quick? The way that you said no hotel, it sounded like that was a hotel chain. <laughs> and so I was like, ooh, they're putting you up at no hotel. Nice. <laughs> it's actually a digital hotel. Um, you can go to nohotel.com. Everything hotel is Zoom time. now. You know, it's yeah. pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hotel, but it's a plant-based hotel. Ooh. <laughs> I can't believe it's not hotel. Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny about that too is it's actually hard to find a place in Pennsylvania that's five hours away. Like you had to you had to search a place that's like <laughs> specifically still in Pennsylvania, but five yeah, hours away. Yeah, it has away to go you. up on a curve. <laughs> yeah, you have it to go to the way I tell you to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm like I'm like no politely, I'm like, hey, thanks for the offer. Uh I'm not doing shows right now, uh, but thank you. Uh, but in my head, I'm like, I wouldn't take this gig if there wasn't a pandemic going on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yesterday, I got a call from somebody I've worked with. Uh, I know um, uh, for a long time ago, manager. Um, he's put me on his uh, new agency's website. Uh, not that came of it, uh, but really good guy. Likes me. Um, and uh, he calls me and then he's like, I started my own agency putting you on the website and we already got actually uh, somebody who's interested in booking for you for a holiday party. And it is more money than I've ever gotten for a gig in my entire career uh, for one gig. And it is uh, a half hour from the other gig in Pennsylvania. Wow. Uh, A half hour further away. Yeah. It's five and a half hours away. (laughs) So really once you reach that threshold, the money goes up. (laughs) It's all about the elevation. You see, it's actually, I gotta say, it's just the debt, the last tiny corner of Pennsylvania, you know, (laughs) right on the edge. I think it's Ohio is next to Pennsylvania, right? I'm not great at geography. Both both of these places are right between upstate New York, like Buffalo ish, and uh, like Erie, Pennsylvania, or and, and, and Ohio. That's excellent. That's dope, man. I'm so excited that you're getting so much money for that gig. Well done. Yeah, I'm excited too. I mean, they have to finalize it, but uh, yeah, I was just like, uh, he said the number, and I was like, uh, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, are we talking about exciting gigs? I got an exciting gig uh, coming up. Ooh. Ooh. September, which I told Brett about, but I don't think I told you, Jared. No. Oh, no. well. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you <went> away. <laughs> He's got to get all the in syncs out of his computer. <laughs> So um, about two years back, I did a show in uh, Pakistan with uh, Gabriel Rutledge. Pakistan. Pakistan, right. Pakistan. I tried. I tried to correct you, but I did it wrong. (laughs) I told you guys about that that story, too, of Anish Shah and I going back and forth, where I said, oh, yeah, I got to do shows in Pakistan. And Anish was just like, oh, you got to go to Pakistan? That's great. And I was like, yeah. 
<laughs> Pakistan was great. He's like, oh, I love Pakistan. It's beautiful. Over like, yeah, Pakistan was beautiful. <laughs> Where did you go in Pakistan? And, <laughs> in Pakistan, I went. There, <laughs> and I swear, like, without trying to. I mean, I was trying to. He wasn't. But I, we had, like, five or six exchanges like that. It was, in my brain, it was, like, the funniest thing. <laughs> it is so much funnier that he doesn't. It's it's funny if both of you are doing it on purpose, but it's even funnier that he's not doing it at all. And he's just having a conversation. And you're like, <laughs> I want to win this. He I mean, leaves that conversation like, man, Rob's a really nice guy. He leaves that conversation like, I did it. I did it. I never said it right once. Get that fucking asshole in that game. <laughs> Hmm. Perhaps, I should take him to Pakistan sometime. <laughs> <laughs> he actually did. And then from like a mile away, it's like Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> the saying it right, I take issue with. We've talked about this before. It's mm-hmm. just, did we just Go it? watch that episode. Go watch that episode. We covered it pretty thoroughly. I'm pretty sure it's episode 27. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen Key was on that episode. I don't even think it is an episode. Someone correct us. <laughs> correct us, please. We have said so many incorrect <laughs> so things. So many wrong things. <laughs> and insane. if you don't say something, we're just going to keep this going. We're just going to keep doing it. Lady, I hope you draw something that's wildly inaccurate. <laughs> just draw a flat earth. Draw a- <laughs> Something. And uh, you guys remember Pakistan. <laughs> it's, it's just a polar bear. <laughs> guys, this is my house, the largest in the world. <laughs> Picture of a cat. <laughs> Rob, what's this new gig? Is it in Pakistan? Uh, <laughs> um, well, no, I already did a gig. I already did a gig there. For a or is it in gig. Russia? Uh, <laughs> Russia. <laughs> So I did it with Gabriel Watchett and um, Kyle Grooms, and it was a fun week. And then uh, Gabriel must have, uh, what's it called? Hated you. Along. No, he liked me. <laughs> 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 he passed my name along to another touring, like, international group of some sort. So I got an email the other day asking if I wanted to do a week in Dubai in September. So wow. Be, yeah, which is pretty that's amazing. Like, that's cool. Uh, they, they don't have regular rental cars all over there, only Lambos. <laughs> <laughs> I you, reading this email, it was like like that level of insane. Like they they know what they got basically. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh well. So they do the shows Thursday, Friday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday the next week. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you just are off. And they're like, well, you know, five star hotels, of course, every night. Uh, you have free meals, three meals a day pay for your flight, you know, and then cash free, I mean, tax free money uh, paid for the gigs on top of it. And I was like, sounds good. <laughs> Let me get back up. to you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really um, exciting. Yeah, that's I can't believe you're doing a show in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> ah, finally, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to do a show in Debbie. <laughs> Debbie does this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I love those little uh, Dubai cakes. The little Dubai cakes. They sell ah, it, damn it! Okay, uh, I got pastries. <laughs> in the grocery. I'm with him. I'm with him. Thanks, thanks, thanks Jared. Like <laughs> are little you guys, Dubai. Are you guys ready to cakes. do some jokes? Oh yeah. Some Were you able to get in contact with uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Ruth Bader, I was, and she gave us an order for this week. Oh, oh, fantastic. Wow. wow. All right. Uh, uh, Crazy okay. that she's able to <laughs> schedule us in since she died. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is drunk Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and she is very much alive. Okay. Um, For some reason, are, old are drunks they... are impossible to kill. <clears throat> <laughs> they live forever. <laughs> that's kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, is Ruth Bader Ginsburg even taking... Uh, orders this this time of year? Like, is she even in session? I don't. This this is this is all. She is in drunk Supreme Court. Okay, there is okay. a whole separate drunk Supreme Court, but it's I just see. her. Great. It's a little bit like you know the People's Court, where she just sort of like she you know, she doesn't. It's not like in a courtroom. She just goes up to people and tells them what she thinks. Got it. So, Jarrett, mm-hmm. what's the verdict? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the decision this week is Jarrett Brett Rob. 
Boom, boom. All right. <laughs> uh, All orders are final. <laughs> <laughs> the orders are final. The drawings are final. <laughs> the jokes are final. And if fine. you don't like it, shut up. <laughs> All right. This one's a longer one, so bear with me. I am tired of the image of liberals in the media that were weak, that were lame, that were a bunch of dorks. Republicans are strong. They like trucks and beer. Liberals need their sweater and their tea. And it's bullshit because liberals are dope as hell. We're trying to legalize drugs. We're fucking awesome. Republicans are fucking narcs getting high on Jesus in the corner. We're doing drugs and we're awesome. We've got Beyonce. Are you kidding me? What does the right have? Scott Baio? Scott, Barack Obama did a podcast with Bruce Springsteen. Is there anything even close to that on the right? I'm honestly asking. I don't know. I haven't been on Parlor in a few days. Does anybody, has Ted Cruz started his podcast with Kevin Sorbo yet? <laughs> Liberals are dope as hell, man, and we fuck. Progressives fuck. Why do you think we care so much about abortion and contraceptions and birth control? We fuck. <laughs> on Twitter, straight white male liberals get called cuck soy boys about a thousand times a day, and then we log off and we take our big hard feminist cocks and we fuck with them liberally. <laughs> He's gonna need Medicare for all that after I bust that pussy open. <laughs> Taught her what this dick do for free because education should be available to all. <laughs> Come on our tits and then wipe them off with recycled paper towels. We don't use condoms because we're trying to avoid single use plastics. I'm I could do this forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you say while you're fucking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Well, this is like a little bit at the very end here. I'm a Democrat and I'm fucking proud. Democrats are dope as fuck. Legal weed, raise the minimum wage, protect the environment, take it on Wall Street. If that was a dude, he showed up to your place and was like, hey, man, I cleaned your water. I gave you a raise and I got you a blunt. You would never stop high-fiving him. Nice great really joke. felt like I got something off my chest. Yeah, <laughs> great, uh, you know, release for you. How are you going to come back from that energy? That was a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've been sitting on this one for a while, but I always felt like it was the wrong time to bring it out. Uh, I feel good about this one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like the joke. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's some mixed themes in there that, yes. that aren't jiving with me. So it starts off that you're weak, um, mm -hmm. and then it very quickly turns into that cool. uh, you're cool, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that you're not instead of you being actually strong, that you're actually cool. And so that didn't add up for me. Um, if you wanted to prove that you're strong, one of the ways that you could do that is that the right has, they have guns. You're like, we don't fucking need guns. <laughs> That's kind of tougher than having a gun. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that. I like that. But, uh, otherwise I would alter the premise to say that like, that you're lame mm -hmm. instead of that you're weak. Yeah. I mean, everything else here is basically about being lame and about being cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I can just yeah, change that yeah. first part. You know, I don't need to add that we're strong. That feels weird. Right. Which yeah, but I do lame like, dorks. Being cool and fucking is is great, and that's where you kind of yeah. found your rhythm, mm -hmm. uh, went into your pocket there. So I would agree with you on that. You know, it's interesting, and I might want to look this up. Bill Maher did a something resembling this premise, Ugh. but I'd want you to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you make me watch Bill Maher. <laughs> oh, <Ooh, laughs> to double. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bill uh, Maher did a bit like this. Uh, so maybe you should watch it. Uh, well, uh. Yeah. Uh, I don't like Neil deGrasse Tyson because he's smug, but Bill Maher. <laughs> There's a guy who's down to earth, you know? Uh, this isn't in, in his stand-up. This is in his show. So mm. if, it, if it helps you, you know, he had writers to help him. New rule. Liberals aren't weak anymore. That's close to it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Look at Leedy. She just popped right up. She oh, like, that's the whole the bit. Idea. Then oh. that's great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, but no, he he took a a slightly different uh, uh, opinion on it. It was mm -hmm. it was a warning to not become you know the the worst sides of liberalism, where you're like like we're the we're the cool fucking kids. That's what we are. Don't don't do this bullshit where mm. you're being the restrictive ones. Like we care about the words that you say, excuse me. That was fucking tippy. That, that, that's, that's, that's Reagan shit. That's not us. Mm. We were the liberal free. You can do what you want people. And then he just kind of went on that. And, but it, it touched on a lot of that stuff. Rob, you have made me so happy because there's nothing I like more 
than when a comic just goes on a rant about cancel culture and I'm like, mm. all right, perfect. This is nothing like my bit then. Isn't it funny how old guys just on the left and the right, they really just kind of merge into the same talking point. <laughs> <laughs> like, Let's stop changing stuff. <laughs> Why can't I say whatever I want? <laughs> yeah. I'm just so, oh, I'm just so bored with it. I'm so bored. Of every comedy special being called triggered or safe space right. or I can't say this anymore. It's like, ugh, ugh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking headphones out of my ears. <laughs> I actually didn't. Steam pushed them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's boring. It's done. It's over, guys. I don't care. I don't I, care. I, Write some I, new material. I disagree with the material. I don't think mm -hmm. that that material is smart. But the underlying message, I don't disagree with. And I think there's plenty of like overlap for liberalism, progressivism, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a better word. It's like when like speaking, I don't think that there is that much of a difference. And or at least it's hard to define it when you're like, oh, this person just got, you know, deplatformed on Twitter. Like, is that? Okay, uh, this person just spoke out against China and then went on television to to apologize publicly. Mm -hmm. uh, LeBron James is defending China. John Cena mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. went on and and did his little public China. Brett's apology. going to apologize to China right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like so now we're in this territory of like oh well that's a little weird. I don't think we should be doing that. But I'm like yeah, but but you're not seeing the parallelism of like someone saying a thing and then you're going so like. Just because who gets upset about what particular thing? Anyway, mm -hmm. it's just it's just an interesting thing. I don't. I, no, I'm not. I'm not mentioning it because the bits are the same, by any stretch. I was saying um, there is some crossover. It, it, was, yeah. it was fascinating because there's some crossover, and I think it would be healthy for you to watch and see, you know, where those crossovers are, uh, if if anything, to inspire or at least to set a contrast to what uh, Bill Maher's point was. But I was just it was reminding me of that. Mm -hmm. if, if anything else, yeah, <laughs> sweet. Maybe we should pause for Brett to get back. Because I thought he was just going to like go out and come back in. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. He is. I'm listening. I just had to uh, take care of something real quick. He had to go see BTS. <laughs> <laughs> but he's back now. I have uh, some acid indigestion and it is... Uh, Driving you bananas. Yeah. So I had to go. I'm like getting gas pains. Ugh, I hate that. Oh, no. Oh, no. I hate that. Do you want to see the hepatologist? <laughs> This isn't the time to go see a music concert, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a big rant about how cool liberals are, and I called it a music concert. <laughs> 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 this isn't the time to go see a band music show. <laughs> One thing I didn't quite uh, add up for me was you're like, Bruce Springsteen did a podcast with Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. When is Ted Cruz going to do a podcast with Kevin Sorbo? As if, like, that would be the equivalent of making it cool, but it that isn't. Well, no, that's the point, is that all of the celebrities on the right are lame as hell. The way you were saying it is like, oh, let me see when they do something cool. That's mm. that's how it kind of came off to me. Yeah. And Honestly, an example of it being cool. I need to replace Kevin Sorbo because I think only people in the Hofstetter universe are going to even know that he's a right wing troll. You know, right. I, I don't I didn't even know. Yeah, even Rob so. doesn't even know. So Tila Tequila is like an alt right neo Nazi. I don't know. She has tattoos. That's like slightly cool. But there are swastikas. <laughs> <laughs> who's the lamest celebrity that they who's, trot who's out? Who's the lamest Republican? Oh god. That's like trying to have a conversation of like what's the grossest puke? <laughs> Still Ted Cruz? <laughs> Still Ted Cruz. <laughs> Still Ted Cruz. I mean, I really appreciate the notes on this. It is sort of just like a big, it feels like a, a, just like a big bowl of ideas as opposed to like being a cogent bit with like peaks and valleys. Any ideas about like the flow or anything like that? Or I like the single use plastic uh, mm -hmm, line. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to point that out, make sure Sweet. that Sweet. that was really, that was really funny. I don't want, you, okay, so, so this is something that, you know, if our audience is looking to get into comedy, like this, this falls more into a, a ranty like style, right? Mm -hmm. And the benefit of that is that if the crowd is with you and it's just rolling like enjoyment, then it's so much can, momentum. Yeah. Yeah. You can get mm -hmm. into that. And if it doesn't, then I guess I'm trying to figure you stop out the rant. And then there's just like <laughs> nothing there. And he's like, I've just been yelling into silence for the last <laughs> 10 minutes. This is a nightmare. <laughs> you're right. You're right. So it's almost like 
when it's not working, what are the kernels that will always work? Sometimes mm-hmm. when you're when you're trying to slim down a joke for a crowd that's just not like with, on board with you, you know, you can usually find a couple of tenets that you're like, well, the joke's primarily based on this. So if I hit these yeah. three points and just leave, then I'm fine. And I'm curious what those are for you. Uh, what's your guiding light to be like, even if a crowd is not with me on mm-hmm. what I'm saying politically, or maybe just disagrees with the general point that I'm making, what, what turns a phrase, what joke are there that are going to get me through regardless sometimes i try to look for those personally where i'm like it doesn't matter if you agree with me this is a joke this is this particular thing is funny and i and i I try to like grow from there so that that's something that i just wanted to point out or throw in there a good end all argument for liberals being cooler than conservatives uh black people (laughs) yeah (laughs) but not all black people right like like a good portion of black people are cooler than white people and then there's no some that guys like, stop <laughs> oh i mean like liberals are like black people not cool than white people we hang liberals hang out with black people <laughs> don't worry and black about people it, are Jared. are undeniably cooler than white people they're just being racist don't worry <laughs> We're so i'm not being racist I'm very, <laughs> I, I'm very confused i gotta uh, turn tomorrow on. <laughs> see what the hell's going on <laughs> I, this is a genuine note i think that that <clears throat> is Black people are everything that is a popular thing was once pioneered by black people and then stolen and made mainstream and then people made more money off it if they it's, white white it's, uh, whitenized it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like literally music, the basis of comedy. Of like it's just yeah, exactly. It's they are the, b- black people are undeniably the foundation of cool it, within our culture. It's just it's just you could go back with almost everything. Mm-hmm. I have a question now. Does, yeah, does, this, does this mean to say, based on Jarrett's and Levy's reaction, uh, positive stereotypes are not necessarily enjoyed? Sometimes they're frowned upon because it's like, well, stereotypes are stereotype, positive or negative. But are we now including the general concept that black people are cooler than white people? I mean, that, that that's a a near age old, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know. I don't even know if I can call it a stereotype. It's just I mean, this stereotype is really old, so it must be okay. Sorry, yeah, sorry, I sorry. No, sorry. I, I, I didn't mean like, to put, I, I did sorry. That was just, that was just to be funny, I swear to God. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> the logic. You're right about that. Uh, what I was going to say was, it's so old, it's to the point of like, I would argue that it's hacky before I would argue that mm-hmm. it's racist to say that. No, so I'm here's, just joking. It's not racist. It's, <laughs> it's I mean, not. as a white person, I don't really have a claim to it. I will say yeah. this, is that I, there's a new... There's a show on Showtime with a comedian. I forget uh, what her name is. I think it's Z-Way or something. Mm-hmm. And she basically has like all these very, you know, kind of like hilariously awkward conversations about race with famous people. Uh, yeah. And one of the questions that I heard from like a little snippet that I listened to of her show was, what are some of your favorite things about black people? And <laughs> as I was listening to it, I was like, don't answer that. That's because you can't say what all black people are like, even if it's positive things. It's mm-hmm. a it's the the kind of generalization that if that was me I would be upset by you know but I I might be wrong about this like I I don't know I I'm not as a white person gonna gonna speak on this uh, with authority I will say how I felt about it I did a show in Brooklyn once where a comic on the stage asked the audience they were saying they were they were calling them black people as opposed to African Americans in the joke and said to the audience I so I say black people instead of African American is that okay and a Black couple in the front, nod of their head, yes. At the same time as a white girl behind them shouted, no. <laughs> and so I'm not going to be that white girl, but I will just sort of like jump away from any generalization whatsoever about minorities. Uh, you're you're yeah. right, Jarth. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Go to hell, say, Rob. This conversation, <laughs> I feel cool. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're cool. <laughs> Fist bump. <laughs> I feel more comfortable. I mean, I, you know, uh, I'm, I wouldn't speak in absolutes, but I would speak in generalities. And mm-hmm. because I, I could just say from my own experiences in general, ex- mm-hmm. doing comedy in front of black crowds versus white crowds, black people in general are cooler than white people. I there mean, is so- something about off in the comments. <laughs> if, we're, if we're wrong, black culture. Let that... us know. <laughs> We've been saying wrong things all hour. I'm so glad I'm editing this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I know that there is a there is a a thing that liberals do where they're just like too cautious about 
what you're allowed to say and what you're allowed to think. And I understand that being sort of like classified as like weenie-ish, too careful. And I'm going to go on Twitter and tell you you shouldn't do, you know, X, Y, or Z or, or whatever you did. But it sort of, it bumps heads against a very real belief that I have that you shouldn't make those kinds of generalizations, even if they're positive. Okay. Black people are cool. <laughs> you heard no, it, I don't heard think so. You heard, it, you, heard <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Black people no longer have big dicks. <laughs> Take it up with Jared if you don't believe so. It's, there's just so much historical evidence that <laughs> black people have pioneered everything that is cool culturally. The whole, uh, that it's like, it's a fact. <laughs> if culturally in these, in, in numerous ways, uh, um, there is a culture that's sort of ahead of the curve, almost like trend setting, then that's a reasonable thing to extrapolate to say, oh yeah, they, they, that they are ahead of, <laughs> of the social and uh, cultural mm -hmm. uh, curve. Something that is like that. Completely fair. That's completely fair. If I was going to make a counter argument as though I were in a minority, I would say that the issue might be that you are still forcing a characterization onto a person. You know, sure. and so uh, and some I also know, setting an expectation. I yeah, also exactly. know a ton of black people who are nerds and it's it's been a weird now it's it's generally more accepted because uh, this 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 uh, acceptance of of black nerds has has grown immensely over the last five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. But there's a weird period where they were like, everybody just assumes I'm the coolest because I'm black mm -hmm. and I'm not. I like comic books and I like, you know tech and stuff like that and there was a weird straddling that that line and and having to go into those expectations so uh if if i can you know play devil's advocate that that is a good uh argument against myself yes yes <laughs> you know i was being an adult yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay yes. <laughs> suck my dick liberal wins <laughs> i'm punching today guys i'm sorry <laughs> you're doing great thank you and next up we got <laughs> retro all right um, Baby, i hope your drawing is just of white guys doing jazz <laughs> <laughs> They <laughs> uh, have pocket protectors. <laughs> um, black people. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. Uh, I did have an old joke. I don't think you could say that, Brett. Every single uh, one of them. No notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I had this joke about how it's like weird if somebody does this positive stereotype. Like you want to, you want to argue against it, but then you're like, you feel mixed about it. You're like, you don't want to correct them. Like somebody's like, oh, Jewish people are smart and they're, and they're funny. I don't want to be like, no, we're not. <laughs> you take that back. I'm dumb. And I don't understand what I'm doing on stage. Is this uh, a real bit that you brought in before we had that whole conversation? Uh, this is, no, this like is not the bit, bit I was planning on doing. Oh. Uh, I did oh. look at it. I considered it today, but mm. uh, yeah, that was just, we'll work on that on another one. Because uh, I don't remember what the wording for it was. All right. Um, I liked it so far. <laughs> okay. When someone asks me what exit they should get off on, I'm like, hopefully none, you pervert. <laughs> 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 kind of weird kink is that? Ooh, exit 187. <laughs> Take me to Pleasure Town in two miles. Also Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the whole joke. Mm. Miles. I don't know in this. I don't know if this fits in there, but I guess you could be like, I don't know, you weirdo, sixty nine. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a horny number, I guess. I like the, the joke's very funny, and uh, I love you playing with road specific things in order to enhance and tag the joke. So that's great. Is it to like if I were to? Do you think if I were to deliver the joke as is, do you think an audience would believe that I don't know what the person meant? Uh, you've played dumb, I think, right? Yeah, Plenty but it's before. this joke, this type of joke mm -hmm. where I, I, I have trouble sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. getting the audience to believe that I really don't mm -hmm. understand what that means and all, enough for them to, to laugh at the joke. I see. I see. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm never buying that you're ever this stupid in, in pretty much right. any of every your jokes. I just imagine you being silly, uh, whether it's like. Maybe it's just because it's it's a little bit softer. Like I've never even considered it 
ever before and i've heard get off on so many times so maybe i'm just like yeah i guess you could see it that way <laughs> yeah maybe, i feel like there's always fun. some fix i can do and i've done it with other jokes um but something like if i could set it up in a scenario where this isn't it but but just if i don't want to have a conversation with somebody i'll make dumb jokes like that set up enough alone right, right. is like now there's no question of whether i believe this or not and you get to get the joke. So, yeah, I don't know. Right, right, right. Or what was the setup before if you didn't use that? I like making dumb jokes thing or when someone asked me what exit they should get off on. I'm like, hopefully none, you pervert. Hmm. I mean, I just kind of like it just being its own thing. Just being like a standalone. You know what? You're right. You know? And now that I am, I am tr- doing more silly stuff with my with my new set, uh, you know, here's something the mainstream media didn't show you won't show you right uh, i did start <laughs> off a set at, set at greenwich with that the other night uh, mm-hmm. i just got on stage and i was like first thing i said in the microphone i was like here's something the mainstream media won't show you <laughs> all right how are you guys what's going on it was just like a great, great. way to start the set it was just very silly they, they, and fun. They, they, they really they, liked it. i got i got a few chuckles but i was like i'm not even giving them a chance to laugh at it or not i'm gonna move i started like i was like these people are making out they're gonna have sex uh-huh. You look great. <laughs> like I just, I just went in high energy. Mm-hmm. So uh, I did get a chuckle, but I don't even know if I gave him a chance to really appreciate it. Did you do yeah. any callbacks to it later on the set? I didn't. I forgot because yeah. I was just all over the place with the set. I, I don't know if it helps, but as a not comedian, to me, it didn't come off. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I was gonna. I was no. Gonna sorry. What, what was what was the feedback? Yeah, I was actually gonna pass it over to you, Lee, because I saw your face. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I interrupted you for a joke, but I didn't. Oh, that's fine. I was just going to say, as a non comedian, that didn't uh, no. talk to me as anything. You fucking. <laughs> God damn it. Set it up twice. <laughs> I didn't mean to the second time, but then it was happening, and my brain was like, you have to do it again. <laughs> this time, I promise you, Brett will not. I'm muting you. myself. I don't mm-hmm. trust you. <laughs> <laughs> what I just said, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> we'll not interrupt you. Brett, go, ahead. Go, fix, go fix your BTS while I say my statement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, Rob, we don't want you to interrupt either, Rob. Wow. No, now, now I really do. <laughs> uh, it doesn't even matter anymore. No, Lita, I want to know. I want to know. I was just no, gonna no, no, say, it worked to me. I didn't think like Brett's stupid. To me, that's an easy enough suspension of disbelief to be like, that's just him being silly. <laughs> Get it, go away. I don't want to hear it. I love how Brett still had his headphones in the whole time. Yeah, I, I, I'm doing a bit, but I really want to hear what Jess is saying. <laughs> no, I was like, I don't know when I can come back if I don't put my headphones in. I forgot to unplug them. bit walk of shame. Okay, you could, yes, you could say I say silly jokes or um, I guess it's a little on the nose to be like, I say I make things sexual when I shouldn't be or something along those lines. Oh, you but- know what it actually might fit in well with is I had this joke about... Uh, when somebody asks me for directions, I just say, follow your heart and drive away. <laughs> uh, and I have had difficulty similarly with that joke. But if I can find a bridge into one of those, they they could easily work off of each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me being a dick when somebody's asking for directions. I may just, maybe I could, I could build a curmudgeon section where I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm standoffish to people if I could find some justification for that. Maybe I'm, uh, I, I identify, even though I'm a social person, I identify as introverted because sometimes I just say stuff without thinking about it and it never turns out well. And then I think that, that actually would justify all those jokes. Yeah, it almost feels as if like, like this, this turn of phrase is nice and it's not something that I'd want you to get rid of. And if it, for whatever reason doesn't work completely on its own as a standalone joke, uh, there are ways in which... You can, if you can just find two or one or two or three more examples of driving things that can be misconstrued as perverted. Mm. Uh, you know, sometimes if you have like a joke that kind of hits like a six, if you kind of string a bunch of sixes together, you're like, wow, this is not not terrible. Um, this is kind How of funny. Like, like, like if if you're if the audience is reacting to your play on words as like that was a, that was fine, that was okay, I kind of got it. <laughs> But if you have other ones that also happen to fit and they fit mm. just about as well, all of a sudden it's very impressive that you're like, well, you actually had like four or five examples of things right. that, that got turned into perverted things just through driving or asking for directions. Or right, whatever. right, right. Like, oh, that's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
so it could be a, a game of just trying to find more of those things, right? Whatever they may. I mean, you already, you know, he said exit sixty nine, and then I think you said something else. You know, if these little things kind of got strung together, at some point I'd be like, that was really cool. I, I, I appreciate that he was able to do all those things. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess exit seventy, but not sixty nine. You fucking pervert. <laughs> uh, just keep bringing it back to that. <laughs> this one is less thought out. Uh, but do you think like during the San Francisco rush, there were a bunch of people? just down in the mines and digging and just like soot all over their face, trying to get some gold. And people are looking on like, if they try to fuck you, they're just going after your money. Don't believe it. They're going to try to, you know, allure you <laughs> with those, those good looks and the, their, their wiles, but they're just after your money. Don't let them fool you. Cause they're gold this. diggers. This is about this. the gold rush, right? Yeah, I love this idea. This is great. I'm all about it. Uh, if you remember my pyramid scheme joke, it's it's you know similarly minded where I, I love right. kind of basing it around the concept, but you never actually say the, the name of the thing. Um, I actually when I when I made this note, I was like, this seems like a Rob joke. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I love it. I absolutely love it. So they are gold diggers, clearly. Yeah. And then what is the warning? The warning is don't sleep with these men. Because yeah, don't sleep with them because they're just using their their wiles to seduce you so they can get your money. Do gold diggers still exist? Are people still digging for gold? Probably not, right? I don't like talking about a group of people like that, to be perfectly honest. It seems a little... <laughs> um, yeah, the logic is the thing that's getting me because the gold diggers themselves are the guys who are like covered in dirt and sweat. They're the ones doing the work for the gold. Um... Oh, maybe the joke is that there were women who would sleep with the gold diggers who were also called gold diggers. That's pretty funny. And oh, so it was, just, yeah, it was really know. confusing because it'd be like, <laughs> yeah. she's Ooh, a gold digger. Well, I'm going, a gold digger. You no, 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 you don't understand. Mine? <laughs> you just going to go down that mine and dig <laughs> all day? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> we should get married. Don't go for that girl. She's a gold digger. I'm a gold digger. I'm a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with digging for gold. I dig for gold. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, I don't, she's just marrying you for mm -hmm. your occupation. You're like, she, okay, she, I moved out here. <laughs> <laughs> she's just putting in the work for money. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's hard work. Uh. <laughs> or you ever think Los Angeles was talking to San Francisco like they, they, they're they not into you <laughs> <laughs> you know we all do things that we don't want to do for money uh, if Kanye's song had come out during the San Francisco gold rush people mm. would have taken a lot of offense to it or would they have been confused by it <laughs> I don't know the lyrics well enough I'm going to look them up I ain't <laughs> saying she a gold digger but she oh, what's the next part <laughs> <laughs> but she ain't hanging out with no uh, broke fellas. <laughs> I'm not saying she's a gold digger, but she's not hanging out with any broke. But she does have a shovel and a pickaxe. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favorite iteration of the joke is just changing that song. If that song had come out during the San Francisco gold rush, it would have been a lot different. It would have been, I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but she does have a shovel and a pickaxe. And that, I ain't saying she's a gold that. digger, but <laughs> all of her digger. clothes are covered in soot. soot. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. Have you heard the clean version of that song? Uh, no. They just say broke, broke. Yeah, they just go, I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke, no broke. And then they yeah. move on. Excuse you, lady. That is offensive. <laughs> yeah, not the first no broke, but the second one. Blah. Yeah. How dare you? I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't hanging out with no broke pickaxes. She needs a real. She needs a, a, a one that works so she can go dig gold. I would have said bro no broke shovels. I feel like it's got the nice broke shovels double, is double syllables. That works. Yeah. yeah. She ain't hanging out with no broke shovels. What She's other words have double syllables that? Fit. <laughs> As a lyric in that song. <laughs> Two syllables. And now it's time for Rob Ryan, everybody. <laughs> Rob Ryan. Uh... But before we go to Rob Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, maybe we should hear about all the great things that are on our Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com oh, yeah, slash that. ITA pod. A lot of great exclusive content on there. We had our first sleepover. Oh, the first yeah. Of, the first, the first of, many. of many. That's right. Yeah. 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 Many. As long as somebody else does. They will <laughs> get less special. Uh, <laughs> uh, the yeah, high-riding challenges. 
Go go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say we it was so much fun. Uh, it was the first time we got together in person yeah. since before the pandemic, uh, and probably before even before the pandemic, it was probably like a year since we had all been in yeah. the same place. Mm -hmm. um, so very very fun. It was so much fun, and uh, also um, it's gonna be a nightmare to edit. Mm. Yeah. So good luck with that, Rob. <laughs> yeah. And now Rob Ryan. Uh... All right. Thank you guys. Um, Woo! Woo! Uh, this is recent because I actually started going back to the... Uh, oh, I got two gym jokes. Hmm. Anyway, maybe I'll tell them both. I just started uh, being able to go back to Planet Fitness. felt more comfortable. I got vaccinated, whatever. Planet Fitness, you've heard the jokes, right? I'm a little I'm a little wary of even the Planet Fitness jokes. I've, I've heard so many of them, but whatever. Yeah, it's Planet like airline, airline jokes. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, it's, yeah. Become, it's become like that or eating ass or whatever. Right. So I've got... Uh, so I've been to Planet Fitness and their whole point is... is you know, they have a, they have the lunk alarm in case someone's acting like a lunk. If you don't know what a lunk is, the guy was like, Ugh! Ugh! he's doing all the, you know, being loud and being intimidating. They say no gin, gym intimidation. Uh, they're really bad with their puns. <laughs> and I felt, I feel bad for the lunks. And I was like, now I think there's like a little bit of like a, a void. Like there's maybe a good economic space there and so i want to open up a place called lunks and it's just, <laughs> it's just for lunks if the entire gym is just fucking so like the door is going to be like this tall but this wide and then you just kind of walk in <laughs> and there's a and instead of a greeter just the guy who just goes like welcome to lunks pussy and that's it just, <laughs> just yell at you uh i didn't get much further with the idea but but i want to open up this the place called a uh, place called lunks and it's just it's just meathead on top of meathead and that's what the place is for it caters to how much work do you think you're gonna have to do just to lay down this concept because i feel like the start <laughs> of this joke is just introducing people to this idea but the joke itself is almost like expecting it to be a more universal, universally shared experience, mm. um, which I would be worried about. Like whenever I write a joke that's a little too specific, I'm always like, I'm always like, how much legwork am I have to do to get everybody on the same page here? I can fix that. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. If you just to go. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, at Planet Fitness, there is a lunk alarm. A lunk is somebody who is grunting and making a lot of noise at the gym. Now my question is, where do the lunks go? That's why I'm starting lunks. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> uh, I really like that. I, I, the, the reason I kept it so loosey goosey is because I had a couple of like just random gym thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like there was one time I was at the gym and there was I was at Planet Fitness and there was a guy and he was definitely being a lunk. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was doing all the things. And I I realized in that they actually do have the alarm and someone behind the counter has to press the button and it goes and it warns whoever, no, they don't get called out by name, but whoever might just be like screaming or grunting or doing some weird <laughs> behavior to stop. If you've never experienced it, it's very it's bizarre. Yeah, I've uh, never wanted to go to the gym before, but I do now. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, are they gonna do it? Are they gonna press it? I'm Is anyone so gonna lunk here? You're not even lifting weights, you're just doing this. <laughs> anyway, lunking. No, I would like, try I, to be a lunk just so I could hear the alarm. <laughs> 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 I'm just picking things over. <laughs> I feel like one, it would be really stressful to push push that button because you're like that guy. You don't want to piss that guy off. Exactly. But exactly. also, I feel like a lunk would never even notice that that's about him. He would never read the sign. He would never mm -hmm. know. They'd just be like, "That's where that happens." At yeah. most, <laughs> <laughs> uh, must be uh, doing an awesome job working out alone. <laughs> <laughs> They're cheering for me. Uh, I must have broken some kind of weight record or something. <laughs> 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 This isn't even as much as I bench, so it's pretty <laughs> impressive. I was going to say the opposite, that uh, the Planet Fitness way to handle that should just be to go up to that person and say, hey, do you mind keeping it down? Having an alarm that goes off that interrupts everybody is a very lunk thing to do. Mm, you know, it's true. like you're fighting fire with fire. What an amusing fire, though. <laughs> <laughs> Now this alarm's going off, and the lunk is like, well, I'm not going to let that be the loudest thing in here. Ah! Ah! They got to put up the second alarm. 
You should still keep the lunk alarm at lunks, but it just goes off every time one, somebody walks in. <laughs> <laughs> now, they have a pussy alert there. So anytime someone's, <laughs> anytime someone's not being cool, being bit buff enough, big enough, they just... Like, <laughs> thought that i had going through my mind uh when i saw the guy clearly doing the behavior but the alarm not going off was like well this is a really weird position for me to be in am i supposed to is it my duty to go tattle on this guy am i supposed to go to the desk and be like ah i don't I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but uh, there's a guy over there and he's oh, he's doing a lot of, you know what I mean? He's kind of being a, he's being a lunk. And I, you know, I'm just, I just wish that maybe you'd press the, press the button, do the thing. Like I'm just being such a, a, a <laughs> cuck. Just like walking up and like, could you, could, I don't want to talk to him, but I know you have the power to do the, the whirly thingy. So <laughs> you could just do that. That'd be cool. At Fun. lunks, is there a special section where you can cuck people? <laughs> that's great it's just like it's it's right next to a planet of fitness there's just a bunch of windows <laughs> and they're just like <laughs> oh man there's a door where they let in all the girls from planet fitness <laughs> um they don't have showers they just have like uh a shower head that's set up with axe body spray <laughs> oh. Wait, maybe it's not a shower head. Maybe it's a hose, like a yeah, fire hose, an axe, an axe and body it, spray hose. Yeah, and it hurts. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brett, your joke reminded me of a of a subway joke where there was a a sign on the subway. It had a, one of those subway surfers, and it's like a picture of a guy literally sitting on the outside of a subway train, and it says like subway surfing is is dangerous and illegal. Like you should ride inside the train. And I'm like, I think the people who do that don't read the posters <laughs> inside the train. <laughs> I don't think they read posters and they're never inside the train. <laughs> so, uh, Yeah, I had a also a similar thought when uh, the cat calling uh, thing went, went around. Uh, that woman walked through New York for 10 hours getting cat called. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was uh, so many blogs written on cat calling and, and all this stuff. And I was like... The guys who catcall are not reading these blogs. <laughs> Sorry, but they're not. There's no guy at the construction place. Like, I was on uh, Jezebel <laughs> last night, and wow, what we're doing is wrong. <laughs> I was going to say, for the subway rider, like, they should just put that on the subway, like, on the outside where they are. You know, and then if they're hanging yeah, on to yeah, it, they're yeah, just yeah. like looking directly at it. And it's in yeah, very small letters because yeah. their <laughs> eyes are right there. <laughs> oh, no, we're not supposed to be doing this, guys. <laughs> Dangerous. I tried doing that once because oh, so not because I wanted to go to the next stop, but because it was late at night and I was all the way at one end where the exit was closed and the exit, the open exit was like all the way on the other side. And so I was like, I'll just ride the subway for like. Until I get to the end, and then it'll jump off. But then the conductor was like, let go. If you ever watch the, I think it's the first episode of Taxi Cab Confessions, where uh, the guy getting interviewed uh, is talking about how his job is to come down every time somebody gets hit by a subway car and stuck. Uh, you will never do that again, because it is brutal. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, like people's bodies get twisted up like a, like a sausage. Every, they're still alive. Because everything is cut off. But mm -hmm. like he's basically like he has to tell them like we're going to move this train and you're going to die when we do that because <sighs> it's going to untwist. Ooh. So like there's this weird window of time where he'll like be like if we can call your wife or get them down here. We'll often get a preacher to give them their like last words and stuff like that. But basically like we're going to kill you now. That was in the movie Signs. Yeah. That's what I yeah. just said. Mm -hmm. Wait, you said that, Rob? Uh, uh, yeah, do, you, can, you can check the recording sometime during <laughs> Britt's uh, explanation. I just said, oh, like signs. We're going to move this train and you're going to die when we do that because it's going to untwist. Ooh. So like there's this weird window of time where. Have you never seen signs there, uh, Lady? No, I haven't. This all sounds terrible to me. It's oh, a, that, that's a very a small. Yeah, not, not a big part yeah. of the movie. It's, a, <laughs> it's about aliens invading. Yeah, and it wasn't a train, it was a car, but it, it doesn't mm -hmm. happen. That makes it a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> There's a re she was only crushed by a car. <laughs> I think getting crushed by a car is less than, like, your body twisting into, like, a pretzel. I mean, yes, that is less terrible. 
<laughs> yeah. Let me see Scary Movie 4? Is that what it was? So anyway, uh, one, one of the know. scary movies. What movie yeah. has Leedy seen? Come on, guys. <laughs> Leedy, <have> you... <laughs> so it's Scary Movie 4. Uh, uh, every scary movie kind of you know, models itself after usually two big horror films. And then the rest are like other cultural references. The Great. original was mostly Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer. The second one was like House on Haunted Hill and whatever. The first one's so good. I, I will first be one the, is best, the best example for what you will need to explain to your audience because I will be the most clueless. So now I can just let you know, I don't know what that is. You're going to have to explain. <laughs> on a sec. What about Drumline? I bet you've seen Drumline because of your parents. No, I am nope. aware of a movie called Whiplash. <laughs> Whiplash okay. is a great movie. That's a fantastic movie. It's funny trying to explain the scary movie series to somebody because the references, the, the references oh, yeah. of that movie are also movies that that person has not seen. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I wonder, are, do you think you're a typical uh, of your age movie seer? Because I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guessing uh, maybe a little below average. No, in terms of movies, I try to go see everything that's new. I don't watch things that are not in theaters now. I, I don't know. There's a lot of classics I haven't seen. but um, mm -hmm. I think with the amount of time that you spend watching comedy shows and stuff like that, you probably <laughs> uh, are, are a little less versed in movies than your, the average person your age. I don't yeah. know. There haven't been a whole lot of movies coming out since I've been going to comedy shows. Like, it's... I, I started watching comedy basically during the pandemic. So like before that, it was just a hobby. Now and I get you, paid to do it. When you say classics, do you mean like Star Wars Episode 7? I've seen that. I know Star Wars. I don't know. Let's just say I'm not typical. We'll go with Do you with mean that. like Drumline? Yeah. Do you mean like Pitch Perfect? Is that a classic? Do you mean like Scary Movie 4? <laughs> the fourth scary movie? <laughs> oh, no. I'll just, I'll just the classics. Like, you know, the things my parents grew up on. I'm going to go back to pretending I understand references now. <laughs> yeah. We have <laughs> gone a little bit off. We were talking about subway surfing. We, we were oh, talking yeah, yeah. about lungs. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it all back, by the way. I've got it all logged up Ooh, here. that's oh. what happens when you subway surf to your body. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Four, which lady was just a parody movie and they're just making they're just parodying other scary movies. That's all. Give up on me at this point. I'm, gonna, I'm just saying just Go for on just, without me, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> just for the Albuquerque crew out there, I'm just for the people. Have they thought about just leaving the person there? Maybe they wouldn't die. Oh, that's, that's true. They're just train, a train person now. <laughs> Train's gotta run. <laughs> He's like, I am the A train. I'm that's who I am now. He's just like <laughs> Hey, how's it going? <laughs> you have any questions or any directions or anything? That's what I do here. Oh, you don't have room for me on this flight? That's discrimination. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Am I the only person? Dad. The top half is a body and the bottom half is, is a the train. train. Okay. Okay. Dad, can I go to Stacy's on Saturday? Go ask your mom. She's like a mile down the road, been down by a car. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, can you help me with my homework? They put it on the on the roof of the car. This is very insensitive <laughs> to people who get rode over by trains. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we're making, we'll just you. pretend it was the one in the movie. Then it didn't really happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think someone made this joke. Uh, they probably did. I can't claim it, but I definitely thought it. Which was like again, another side of the subway. They're like. Last year in 2018, 159 passengers were struck by trains and 12 died. And I'm like, that's great odds. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> what? I thought instant death, not but even a thought in my mind. Now I'm like, maybe I could. The other 147 are now part of the train. The train people. So. <laughs> they roam the night. It's not a good life. <laughs> the rest have become twisty train people. <laughs> then they can form like a train gang and they can just be, be friends. I'm trying to figure out if it's wrong if I draw that. <laughs> I've, I've been talking about it forever, so you will draw a train person. <laughs> I just draw a truck person because then science is a truck person. Then it's not wrong. Uh, yeah, the story behind Thomas the Tank Engine is <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs>
That's the problem is that every time there's one of those accidents, there's never like one evil scientist, you know, who's like, <laughs> perhaps I can be of assistance. <laughs> Shufir moves this woman into my lab along this train. <laughs> and I will make sure your mother will always be with you. <laughs> At 2.25, 2 33, 2.48, you can see your mother. I had other gym jokes. I don't know if anyone, if you guys are interested. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just want more German accents. That's all I want. You want more German accents? Yes. I sent a great text thread to Jarrett when I was on Mushrooms, uh, all in a German voice. Oh, I don't remember uh, that. What was it? Yeah, I I tried to say uh, Jarrett. Actually, I think I think I remember this. Jarrett said in conversation, uh, he was talking. We were talking about my cluster headaches, and he said he just threw in very casually like suicide headaches, and. Uh, it was just kind of like a, I was like, it's cool that you like have picked up on that and you use it casually because sometimes people kind of, uh, they dismiss cluster headaches. It's like, eh, it's just a headache. And so you picked up and I was like, hey, man, I noticed that you use that and uh, it was really cool of you. And I just want to let you know that it was noted. But I meant to say noticed. And I was like, man, that makes me sound like a clinical mad <laughs> sociopathic <laughs> scientist like every social infraction will be taken note of every social grace will be noted and i will decide who gets to live and who gets to die did you call it un suicide edic? that is one point <laughs> if you do a social infraction you will be put to death if you do a social grace you get a sticker Man, these stakes. I don't like this game. Oh, God. <laughs> the real downside. This is worse than roulette. <laughs> I, I'm going to set that as my ringtone, and no one's going to know why, but I'm going to laugh every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be, you got this sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of suicide being like a moniker that goes to just show degree, like scale. Where, you know, Javaris is like, ah, I got dry mouth. It's like suicide dry mouth. Like, just, <laughs> ah, it's really bad. It's really bad. I got a suicide splinter. <laughs> I had suicide diarrhea. That's why I could. <laughs> what? Yeah, there's explosive and then uh, there's suicide diarrhea. Just for any listeners at home who don't know, uh, cluster headaches are also off, off still also called suicide headaches. And we're called that for like. 400 years uh, before the medical term was updated because when there was no treatment, uh, people who had them would often kill themselves to escape the pain. So anyways, just want to put that fact in there. <laughs> I'm full of just fun stuff today. Wow. <laughs> Way to bring this podcast down, Brett. Let's talk more about people getting twisted to death by trains. <laughs> She's like, at least, and then a suicide headache comes out. She's like, oh, come on. <laughs> oh my head hurts so much she tried to kill herself because of the headaches and now she's a train woman <laughs> I think we should move on to Lady Doodle Time my yay hey, Lady, Lady Doodle Time, Lady Doodle time. Lady Although, Doodle I, do, time. I, I feel like we need our own song isn't that like Ben Glebe's song yeah Oh yeah, yeah. is that not the song for every time Lady does a doodle on every show I think it's just ben, what Ben Glebe sings right oh. Lady yeah like, uh, Muggleton makes me jingles and things. Ooh. Yeah, so we need to make our own thing for Lady. Right, you did a great rap for one okay. of our recent episodes. Okay, give me episodes. a beat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this will be great. Lady oh. will draw for us. It's she good... will put pen to paper and bring life to our jokes. Okay, we did it. <laughs> the song. There it is. That's the song. <laughs> I loved it. Have you okay. ever heard a joke and wondered what it looked like? Well, Lady is here for that. It's so weird trying to explain what I do. <laughs> Most people are like, that doesn't really? sound good. <laughs> and I'm like, well. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah. Who says All that? Right. You can't just say I illustrate jokes that comedians make? 
Yeah, but then they're like, but why? And you show them? How do you show them? I'm like, I just got them. Lady, I don't like these people. Very yeah, judgy. No. I, I would like be, I would like, be real Neil deGrasse Tyson about this. I would be like, well, when you hear a joke, you can't see it. So when I draw it, then they can see it. The people I'm talking to are Albuquerque people who only go oh. to the one comedy club we have in town, and it's it's improv based. So new rule. <laughs> You're not allowed to ask Lady. Uh, so I have to be a host to share in the meeting. I'm sorry. I should call you needy, Corbin. <laughs> First up, I have what I thought. <laughs> not, far not far off. off. Not far off at all. Not far very, off. Very, hey. very good guess. Wow. Nice. That's pretty good. Mm. Well, I'm very glad. I must see this picture. Please send the, it to me after The cut this. is actually 100% accurate. Yeah. The, cuts, the cut's perfect. Uh, no, but they're, they're super loose and, oh. and flowy like that. Mm, I yeah. bet they actually look really good. I'm here They're for excellent outfits, though. I They're... own a pair of corduroy orange bell-bottom, uh, uh, like, dungarees-ish, and oh, nice. I will stand by them as a Maybe, fashion choice. Just so you know, they are c- incorrect. Like, they, they're wrong. <laughs> Like no! They're they're, they're de- I am right in that they are great looking and fun and cool. The oh, and they were telling you it was shit. Yeah, they're telling me that it's that it's. Oh crap. well, fuck! Don't listen to them, sweetie. Don't. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. First of all, Rob is six four, so that just adds a lot of fabric. Okay. <laughs> Second of all, he stands like that too. That's not him walking. <laughs> That's just the stance he takes. <laughs> Uh, I mm. still support this. And then next I have this. <laughs> <laughs> what a great expression. Uh, <laughs> is this how it's done? <laughs> I didn't have enough time to animate this, but I will have an animation after the show of him just going, bah, 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 bah. Because <laughs> I think it makes it more fun. I love and that. Then the, the I have the Cynodome. Cynodome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, I have the personification of Patreon. I think he's. <laughs> oh, he's so cool! Ooh, he is so cool. I think he's a sleepy. He has an like, accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Patreon. He's, he's eccentric, is what I call. Him. <laughs> <laughs> he might be French. We do not know. All right. Uh, and I have then... episodes you can watch for as little as a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I will get you high. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you. If I need more, I can get you some Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, next, I have open your eyes to the truth. <laughs> I want to hear in the comments about the effect of vaccines on the body. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. <laughs> Um, there's a magnet in the arm. There's a magnet. I'm just spitting straight truth for your your comment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, if vaccines don't cause magnetize magnetized skin, <laughs> tell us in the comments, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I have liberal. <laughs> <laughs> what a great background. <laughs> 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 you just made strings. such a clear like <laughs> the vision that came to my brain when you did that. Oh, yeah, that it. is perfect. I love it. Amazing. Um, and then I have Pleasure Town, two miles, breast stop, also Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Exit. Six breast nine. stop, great tag. Breast did you? Stop. Yeah, that was that was all Leedy. Right? Yeah, you didn't say breast stop. Thank you, you so much. <laughs> I believe it was our first episode with Leedy where she was like, well, I don't tell jokes. And this is exactly what I was talking about when you I was like, yes, joke. you do. Yeah. I mm-hmm. definitely said it in other episodes, the fact that I'm not a comedian, but I very much enjoy being here. Thank you. <laughs> well, you, I think you said something like, I don't make, I don't know how to, anything about jokes. And I was like, you definitely do make jokes. Oh, yeah. You, you <laughs> construct things in, in a joking yeah. way. Unintentional sure. joking. Mm-hmm. I love it. Oh, well, you're, you're hitting, you're. Yeah. Great for accidents. Breast stop <laughs> is, has clearly crossed over into actual tag territory. No, no, this yeah. was an it's accident. She district. doesn't know how to spell rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. That was a typo. <laughs> okay, well, then I'll be more proud of myself. Thank you. Yeah, guys. yeah. Nice. Be more proud of yourself. Sound off yeah. in the comments if Lady should, how proud Lady should <laughs> how be. How cocky One should Lady 20. be? Is she enough? <laughs> Too much? Do we, do we need to take her down a peg? Do I have <laughs> Please tell me, do I have moderate or suicide ego? There we go. That's legit. That's a legit joke. That's a great joke. Great callback. Thank That's you. Great. All right, moving on. I have an animation. 
<laughs> We're going to watch it again. <laughs> Amazing. <There you> <laughs> this is uh, phenomenal. That's great. <laughs> He's got the most sick hairy chest ever. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I have, I'm a train lady. <laughs> 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 I'm a train really lady. The quickest drawing I made and the one I regret oh, yeah. the most. Uh, so you're not hard. supposed to call them trainees, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely incorrect. All right, moving on. <laughs> I have. <Whoa! laughs> And what a great picture. <laughs> I wow. know. This is, this is, uh, it's a, a lot of time on this one. I think <laughs> I did. I spent so much time on that one that I didn't have time to animate the other one. I hope it's worth it. <laughs> no, it's totally Oh, that's great. It's great. That's it for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wonderful job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was Lady Doodle Time. Lady Doodle Time. That's what that was. And hey. now it's done, Lady Doodle Time. That is the end of Lady Doodle Time. Word. Also, it's the end oh. of the episode. So let's end the episode. <laughs> end of the let's episode. go. End of the episode. That was the end of the episode. When does it start? When does it end? We don't know. Where did it come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Lady, where can people find you? Oh, sorry, Jared wants to wrap more. Go ahead. No, Jared. that's it. <laughs> okay, good. This is the part where Lady does her promo, <laughs> promo, promo. Let's see that promo. I, uh, You can find me on Instagram at Art for My Heroes. Um, I'm on French Patreon, uh, Patreon slash Lady Corbin. Oh, your Patreon's French too? It is, yeah. How oh, fun we should get our Patreons together. Oh my God. I am from French. She's a girl. I'm also on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Lady Art. I stream from time to time. And I'm going to be in Sacramento and San Francisco with 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 Brett. I'll be drawing yeah. Brett. Yeah. I think by the time this comes out, we will either be back or still there. Uh, so if we're true, still yeah. there, come out. I think there's, all the shows are sold out and you can't. But that's Waste okay. Time. We're going to be doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-hoo, stuff in the past. <laughs> or currently. Who knows? <laughs> Thanks Great. for watching. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Jared? I've been, I'm in a weird mood all day. All day. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Check back every Monday for new episodes, or you can listen wherever you enjoy podcasts. If you want to help support the show, tell your friends how much you like Is This Anything. Or get involved, like an episode, share, comment, subscribe. If you want more Is This Anything, you got to join our Patreon at patreon.com slash ITAPod. We have a ton of awesome, exclusive content on there, and you can join for as little as a dollar a month. Check out the links in the description, and hopefully we'll see you next week. <laughs>